I hate zombie takeout. This podcast is even older than me. Hello, and welcome to episode 360... 336 of Zombie Takeout. Zombie Takeout. The B Movie and Cult Movie Podcast. I'm John. Hello, I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's movie, we've got a voicemail from Bodo about this movie, this week's movie. Hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, sorry, sorry. I fell asleep watching House 4 for the 20th time. Oh, I guess this would have been okay if it was a prequel to Toxie. Speaking of movie franchises with four movies, that's a hell of a lot better than this. Wishmaster, Pumpkinhead, Prom Night, Multi-Handed Shark 2, 3, 5, and 6. For some reason, they're missing 4. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. That would have been a hell of a lot better. Why did you torture us? I mean, they strike back and eat plants eventually, but still, it would have been better. The only good thing about it was Commander Krill having his own private little war. I know, obscure Star Trek reference. Anyway, you guys are the best. Oh, half a brave. Half a brave. Peace out. <laughs> Thank you, Bodo. <laughs> oh, boy, yes. I uh, Wow. <laughs> it's another one of those. We could just go home. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, it's the last uh, of the house movies. Um, You stumped us both with a Star Trek reference, which is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Krill were the uh, aliens in the Orville. Okay. I think... <laughs> And then, of course, there's the bad Jedi in the Commander Clone Krell. Wars. In Clone Wars. Commander Ranger. Krell. Yeah. Commander Krill, though. Huh. Oddly enough, the, the text-to-speech on, on, yeah, on, on the, the phone, on the message, which is usually hilariously off, corrected it to Commander Krug, Christopher Lloyd's character from Strict for Spock, spelled correctly. Right. <laughs> Doc. <laughs> and the reason I tortured you, um, I can just come clean with this now. So we've had these, we've had the first three on the list for fucking years. Yes. You, you wanted to do them cause you remembered them from when you were a kid. They were, it was one, yeah. two and three. I only and, seen the first two mm-hmm. and had pretty good memories of mm-hmm. the, the second one. You were a kid. Liking with the uh, Ratzenberger. Right. Well, Ratzenberger's part was great, but yeah. yeah. I liked the first one almost enough to recommend it. I get to the second one. Same here. Fucking hated it, except for Ratzenberger's part. And right. I pause it during the movie, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I can find four online. Find it on YouTube. And then I get a bit vindictive, because I hated two so much. I think, you want to review the fucking house movies? We'll review the fucking house movies. I added four. <laughs> and I kept insisting on we, that we do all four. Hence, we did all four. To basically punish you for but putting him on the list. But to be fair, I got hoisted on my own petard. I, yeah, I was ready to tap after two easily. I was mm. like, ah, you know, we don't really have to do three because <laughs> it can't get any better than, the, than this. Actually. I knew we were kind of at the, the peak of the series pretty much mm-hmm. with the first two. Yeah. I, I just decide, you know, if I wasn't pissed off about how much I hated to, I, I, I probably would have gone for that, but you know, I had to push it and ended up pranking myself because th- I got to yeah. this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, before we get to House 4, I just want to recommend something real quick. Um, it's a BBC show called The Goes Wrong Show. Um, it was also done on, on the stage in a number of places. It's from a, a troupe called um, Mischief Theater. Basic premise of the six episodes on Tubi. Um, are, are, it's this theater troop putting on a play and literally everything goes wrong. Oh, is this with uh, Tennant and uh... I'm trying Only, to think who else? He may have been on, sta- on stage with them. I've seen the first six episodes and, and it's uh, it's just Mischief Theater. Nobody well known there. Um, oh, okay. Because I was going to say there was like a series with Tennant and um, I, McKean, I think? I can't no, remember No, no, this now. isn't that. Um, but after the first episode, I or during during the first episode, I laughed so hard that I felt like I had worked out afterward. <laughs> so I have to recommend it. Links in the show notes. Um, and aside from just being hilarious in that respect, 
the physical comedy is practically ballet. Like, it is insane what these people pull off on stage. Like, in one take. There's no edits. It's it's beautiful. So please wow. check that out. Again, links in the show notes. And finally, on to this week's movie. Uh, and, of course, the impromptu plot summary. Which is from, I almost forgot to say, from 1992, House 4, The Repossession. I'm all, It's finally over. And I'm already trying to forget this fucking movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, of course, it brings us There's to the... There's a reason imp- why we don't usually do direct-to-video. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, it brings us to the impromptu plot summary. Sponsored by Tropes. String enough of them together, and you just might be able to convince yourself that you have a story. Or not. <laughs> uh, also brought to you by your pizza man. Hold the face and the anchovies. But, but the face just adds that extra bit of umami. <laughs> uh, all right, so we have our hero from one who is back in a house that doesn't seem like the same house that he had in one. No, it's not. With a different wife. That was his grandmother's house. This is his father's house. You know, you picked the perfect title for this week, John, Mm -hmm. because, uh, I mean, this is not my beautiful house. Yeah, exactly. This is not my beautiful wife. I mean, I was referring to a different Talking Heads song, but we'll get to that. And uh, I think ten minutes in, all I could think of is, my God, what have I done? Also, it's a different house, and probably less than a decade later, yet he has a new wife and a 12-year-old daughter. Right. This would have worked if it was the boy grown up. Yeah. Uh, And I... Oh, it still wouldn't have worked. Just that part of it would have made more sense. That's true. That's true. There would be consistency. It would not have worked, though. (laughs) So, uh, uh, they're at this house... Uh, that is a different house, uh, but it's the same guy, and uh, but it's a different family. Maybe he's a bigamist. Who knows? Mm. <laughs> that was one thing. I was, that's the only thing I could think of. Like he had a different wife elsewhere. <laughs> this is what broke up the marriage. So she found this out, and you know he was kind of on the outs with her at the time, but they reconciled, and well, now he's back. I'm making up a better movie yeah, than they made. <laughs> he never actually got back together with the first wife the wife in the first movie I, I i praised it for that so maybe they didn't and maybe she took custody of the kid and he just moved on with his life but that doesn't explain the 12 year old daughter unless it was her daughter and you know he adopted her whatever it's something going over this dreadful plot sorry we're trying to justify up, this movie that has no justification make up a plot for this movie that doesn't exist it, you know maybe it was you know he was her stepfather yeah <laughs> They talk about stepbrothers and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, all right, so they're at this house. Uh, he has a sentimental attachment to this, um, even though what he went through in the first one already, he was in that old house. Uh, I guess he wanted to stay in this. What are the odds of a guy having like two houses mm-hmm. with dimension doors in, yeah. in both? And he, he wanted to stay in this house because his grandfather made a deal with the local Native Americans to keep it in the family and make sure it didn't get taken down because there was a, some kind of monster sealed in the basement. Right. So that's the underlying... Uh, that, that is the, the general plot of the movie, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But what we have what happens, of course, is that he they have a mysterious car accident and he mm-hmm. dies and he and his um and and by I'm going to be like Michael Jackson in the comment sections uh the the daughter is in a in a wheelchair <laughs> so, yeah I'll, I'll be going on about that at later at length yep, I got the popcorn right here <laughs> oh I don't have anything that makes a yeah there you go <laughs> Uh, I don't know if it sounded like popcorn and not mixed nuts, but yeah. um, it was theater of the mind, people. <laughs> we um, So the wife decides, after pulling the plug heartlessly on this pile of ashes that he mm. uh, was in the, in the chair, in, in the hospital yeah. bed, uh, I think probably got a discount on cremation, am I right? Because the job was kind of half done already. Mm-hmm. But anyway... Uh, she decides, daughter's in a wheelchair, mm-hmm. I'm going to move into a house 
that pretty much looks like an Escher painting. Yeah. And <laughs> her wheelchair is something from the 19th century. The first one. Then yeah. for some reason there's a second one after that. Well, it's that's kind when of she like, comes what? back at, from the hospital after another accident. But yeah. Yeah, after the yeah. end of the movie, the climax. But yeah, her first chair is from the fucking 19th century. And the bad guy even has a line, you know, move to a place, you know, with elevators for her. <laughs> like, kind of like, yeah, why the fuck would you? But anyway, she uh, feels this connection with her husband there. So she forces the daughter to move there. And um, the house in turn torments her, mm. which is quite puzzling. It's the husband... His spirit, it turns out his spirit is still in the, in the, the material plane. Mm-hmm. And, um, she, uh, he's trying to get her attention to let her know that he was murdered. Right. And, um, of course his tormenting her almost drives her out of the house because, well, you know, in fact, there's even something written in the mirror, get out, isn't there at one mm-hmm. point? There had to be another spirit there that was tormenting him. her. I don't think it was him until we get his entrance later. They just never explained what it was. Right. So the, the you know, if she goes, the other dude uh, gets at the house and then, you know, does, breaks the seal or dumps toxic waste on the seal. Whatever the fuck these 1930 gangsters were, mm-hmm. you know, trying they to really be. Were. I mean, the way they were like in the car. All right, Muggsy. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the henchmen is Polly from Crime Story, who fucking kills in Crime Story. Mm-hmm. Uh, not really an actor, and actually, oh, okay. <laughs> the cat was actually in the game, mm-hmm. but went into the. You know, Michael Mann was doing that sort of yeah. thing. That's how he did with Marina too. Mm-hmm. Was a cop, and he cast him. But uh, so the um, they uh, they almost do drive her out. They torment because the gangsters then start tormenting them and that almost of course gets them out but then the husband finally comes in um believe it or not uh played by william cat from the first movie why didn't he just wear the fucking red suit Mm -hmm. i mean that's all we really wanted to see (laughs) no one gives a fuck about anything else at this point in his career honestly um but then he's, you know, he's showing her and, and, you know, telling her and he, she's has, so his presence convinces her to stay. And, um, then she figures out, of course, that the murderer was in fact his, uh, f- foster brother or step, you know, stepbrother who's been trying to steal the house for this weird toxic waste crime syndicate thing that. It felt like a fever dream, honestly. Mm. I had no idea what the fuck I was looking at with any of those scenes. And uh, so the spirits finally start tormenting them. Mm. And uh, it winds up, of course, with the whole big fire and uh, hilarity ensues. Oh, I forgot the subplot. There's like yeah. a maid. People just show oh, up yeah. at the house. Right. Just, just like it, which kind of fits the series in a way like mm-hmm. everybody's just right. kind of walks into the house nobody yeah. locks the house that they're in but uh yeah there's a maid who shows up nobody hired her and um yeah she's obviously not a maid because she's looking around for shit and you don't mm-hmm. know exactly what it is right. nor really feel that compelled to figure it out because <laughs> like, why would you invest in any of these characters but hilarity ensued after this movie was done Mm -hmm. house four was filmed in november of 1990 but wasn't released until going direct to video until on in january late january 92 um i think that says a lot i think they're probably trying to shop it for a a theatrical release and and yeah they they didn't have a movie here (laughs) they didn't have a movie last time either though and what i forgot to mention about the seal it actually, from what I recall, wasn't a, a monster under the seal. It was some Native American, like, um, paradise or, like, healing spring or something. Yes. Um, so a within, healing spring. Yeah, yeah. So within the first five minutes, we start getting racist Native American stereotypes. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I was... Ex- <laughs> what are my notes? 
I think if I see if they pan the camera in on him and there's a single tear running down his yeah. face, they came I'm real close to off. that in one scene. <laughs> I was half expecting it at one point. I really would have. It would have been the first movie I ever tap out of. Uh-huh. But if they did that, I think I would have been done. I almost have. Only if they were but... joking. If they were joking, I would have taken it. But they uh, were not yeah. joking. In no, this was not, the there was part. no comedy in this thing. The uh, Pizza Man was a comedy. Oh, yeah, fair. Um, but I would have tapped, but I wanted to see every second of it so I could fucking rip it apart. Um, <laughs> Cat is phoning it in in the first part. Like his first couple. Oh scenes. my god! Yeah, and then he comes back at the end, and he's just weirdly overacting. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, did, did they come decide to pay him more to come back, and that's why? Oh, you're gonna pay me how much? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, the car accident looked good. I have to admit that. Um, the the explosion was hilariously spectacular. Yeah. Like way over Where's the last top. words, mind if I smoke. <laughs> but then of course the daughter gets, you know, um ends up in a wheelchair. Um and Do tell us what you felt about that. <laughs> well, I have exactly in my notes at that moment, is there going to be a non ableist reason to put Laurel in a wheelchair, the daughter, in a wheelchair? Nope. <laughs> she was put in a fucking chair for one scene where she gets pushed down the stairs. Pretty much. Um, Which is fucking they, they triggering acted, to watch. They acted like her upper body was paralyzed too, but it wasn't. No. Well, she went backwards. It was backwards. very bizarre. She was kind of out of control when she went over the stairs. She was going, she went backwards. But she she gave they gave her disability to abuse her. To abuse a disabled yeah. person in one scene. And to set the bad guys on her because she's disabled. She's a 12-year-old girl. That's a that's enough of a reason for the bad guys to say, oh, she's vulnerable, let's terrorize her. They didn't right. need to add so, the disability. The, the entire thing just did not make any sense. And did the accident even look like something that would cause that kind of injury? I mean... <laughs> I don't I mean, I don't know how, how she hit in the car. She, it landed on its top. Um, the wife was able to get out. Um, Roger was would have been able to get out, but his seatbelt um, got stuck, and they had to bring the daughter. The wife had to save the daughter. Didn't make it back in time. Um, if she didn't have a seatbelt, I could see you know her net, her head hitting the top of the the, the roof of the car, and possibly damaging that, her spine in such a way that would paralyze, paralyze her. Paralyze her from the waist, from the neck down. I mean, I think I her arms know. worked, didn't like, they? Exactly, they did. Except they kept like lifting her out of the chair like it was clockwork orange. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because you know that's like his you know there there were two experiences he had the the filmmakers had with people's in 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 wheelchairs. I mm-hmm. felt there was clockwork orange, mm-hmm. and then there was the um the 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 one movie you're in that wheelchair blitch. Yeah. Um. Oh, that was but, it. Oh, by the way, in case we have new people, I'm I use a wheelchair, so that's why I'm ranting about this. Um, she was also new to the chair, which could be explained why she couldn't do that stuff herself. Bear in mind, I've been in a wheelchair since kindergarten, been disabled since birth. So, you know, I have the arms for it. <laughs> and it was quite a shitty chair. Oh, yeah. Like I said, first she ends up in this, you know, 18th cent- or yeah, 19th century chair with the big wheels in the front and like a wicker back. I don't know why the fuck they did that. It made no sense. And then I think it was after the climax of the movie, she comes back to the house. She's in like this shitty hospital chair, which was a bit more reasonable, but it was still like two decades old. Yeah. It reminded me of the chair I got in the early 80s. It um, was uh, obviously a surplus store thing that they picked up. Yeah. For, for you know, props. And I'm or, just, you know. And I'm just going to hit the other ableist point of the movie. The, the main villain, the, the crime boss, was a little person who had a phlegm issue, like a disgusting phlegm issue, a lot of gross out humor, and they just did it to make him disgusting and, and you know, freaky. Right. So, again, abusing a disabled person. Um, so, yeah, that's enough for me to hate this movie, but there's more. <laughs> um, now, on to the housekeeper. I normally like Denny Dillon. 
you know, she yeah, has I've a, seen her in other things. I'm trying to, I was trying to remember like what I've I seen think her in. Our generation would best know her from Dream On. Right. Well, not many people remember Dream On, but um, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Um, I normally like her. I mean, she kind of has her thing that she does all the time. I, I get a kick out of it. I didn't even like her in this one, which is weird. Nobody was going to be able to rescue this movie. The script is so bad that Denny Dillon seems stiff. Love her or hate her, she's never stiff. <laughs> you know, Polly from Crime Story, you would think, would save. Although, they, Polly did have probably one of the best scenes in the movie. <laughs> but that's later on. <laughs> Then she goes into the basement to fix something. I have to get something. I don't remember. She's got a flashlight. And you, we can see perfectly well in the basement, even though she's got a flashlight, which, okay, that's a, right. that's a reasonable conceit. Yeah. Then she drops the flashlight under these boards above the seal, and it just goes fully dark. It just seemed odd. She dropped the flashlight. Right. It stayed on, but suddenly the basement goes dark. And that's what she had. She had to fish that out, and then yeah. the light blows up, <laughs> and yeah. that scares her out. Mm. And okay, the music in this thing—it's rare. I think we've run into this before, but it is very rare that the music upstages the cast. <laughs> it's just insanely melodramatic. The you know. There's also the weird scene, I almost forgot about this if it wasn't for my notes, but the scene with her father, like, mm -hmm. she's a new widow, yeah. and her father just being like, what the fuck are you doing, kind of. Yeah. And her father was creepy as fuck. Yeah. That was a scene that we could have lived without. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was just definitely an unnecessary scene to the story. Oh, and, and just a bit of dead meat foreshad foreshadowing. Um. At one point, Kelly, the wife, says, Laurel is perfectly safe and happy here. And I have in my notes, she's going down the stairs the hard way, isn't she? Of course. Yeah. Um, you knew that was coming. Mm -hmm. And just, like, the whole fact that they were in a house of, yeah. with so many stairs. It was just ridiculous. And how the fuck did she get... Did, this, did Terry Trees, who was is not a large person, the actress who no. played the wife... Um, how did she get the daughter in the wheelchair up those all of those fucking stairs? Okay, you've pulled me up like a few stairs at a time here and there. Yeah. That staircase, you know, granted I was an adult, I weighed, uh, yeah, weighed a bit more. But still, that would have been impossible to get up a staircase like that. Unless she carried right. the daughter, set her down somewhere, and then brought up the chair every fucking time. It's never addressed. No, it's no. never like, I mean... And that's, it's the same problem that the last movie that we reviewed with this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they're just things that they throw together because yeah. they, they like the visual or they just, uh, they're just a certain aspect that they want to do, but nothing actually makes sense. Like you, both of these movies have this problem. There are things like the turkey for lunch last yeah, week. Right. And then this this time you get a pizza out of nowhere, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, guess what's in the pizza? Kind of, you know, and <laughs> like a you can singing, see it coming from a mile away, and a singing pizza guy that cost the movie a half a brain. <laughs> but I, I did think when Burke, the brother-in-law, turned heavy, that was nicely done. Uh, I didn't see that coming. Um, like, well, he turned dark, I, not just like you know, I nice guy think... trying to get her out of the house. The that it's the entire problem of this movie is that he Bert is the, that that's his name Burke the, the brother yeah. Burke Burke he should have that's been anyone. he should have been the main character of the movie uh -huh. like you know he, yeah. he involved the mob and all this right. and and try you know having this problem and like oh now they want to stay and the house should have been entirely tormenting him yeah from get-go as right. soon as he made you know made the murder you know uh -huh. the house should have been on his case right and should have of course left the the wife and daughter alone mm -hmm. and it, it's just and, and this is why i doubt your your supposition that it, they were trying to get a theatrical release because it's just so obviously a paycheck movie in every fucking way for everyone. 
<laughs> well, it was either that or they just couldn't even find a distributor for the video. That's what I'm thinking. Be, yeah, to go with that way too. But of course you'd shop it theatrically yeah, first. Yeah. yeah. And then um, work a deal for a video if that doesn't work. Um, I did get but, a kick out right. of I, I did get a kick out of Kelly murdering the pizza. Yes. She just stabs it and then throws it in the garbage disposal and just like goes to town on this pizza trying to kill it. That I enjoyed. Um another half a brain deducted for shouting out the myth of mental illness, uh an old book from the sixties that claims there's no such thing as mental illness. Yeah. Um Wait, they shout it out? Oh, you very they, clearly see her reading she, it in a couple of scenes. That was one of the books she was reading. Yeah, I, that I have some serious issues with. Also, from a believability standpoint, Laurel at one point says she hates macaroni and cheese. <laughs> what kid hates macaroni and cheese? <laughs> very true. I mean, I know, I know some adults that uh, really enjoy it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't get that. Um, oh, by the way, I knew I recognized the name Terry Trees from somewhere. Um, she was the next door neighbor on the TV version of Alien Nation that the main character was flirting with. <laughs> if you remember Alien Nation. And yes, I do. And and you know, honestly, she does her damnedest to oh, yeah. sell this movie too. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, because <laughs> I remember thinking she was pretty good on that show on Alien Nation. And I liked then, everybody in that show. Yeah, and then she gets to this, and she can't even say do something with this fucking script. Yeah, it, I I don't blame any of the cast in this. This is totally, I mean, it's totally the writers. It's mm-hmm. not even the directors as much as just the writing is non-existent again. Yeah. yeah. Um, the dream scene where Burke turned into where the nurse turned into Burke was fun. I do remember. I did enjoy that briefly <laughs> it was weird right um and then they walk into the toxic waste plant and i'm gonna call it a toxic waste plant because it looked like they manufactured toxic waste specifically it did, did, did. <laughs> and it almost becomes a completely different movie right and right i think if you had this this was his movie mm. and he was in this world yeah. for most of it right and he, you know the object was to get the house. You can even still call it house, right? Because <laughs> the, uh, the movie got markedly better when the house started going after the gangsters. Mm-hmm. But when and of course this is like an hour into it, yeah, of course. Yeah. When Roger Fur finally shows up, or his spirit, did we need right. to see his photo twice to get who that it was him? <laughs> Like they show his photo, you see the supernatural thing happen. Then they show his photo again, like we wouldn't have gotten it. I think they're counting that people probably fell asleep at some point during this. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> and then they like forgot about the first few minutes. Like, oh yeah, that's the greatest American hero guy. That's mm-hmm. right, he was in this. Uh, I did. I also enjoyed Algernon coming to life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and early in the film, that was a very, that was a very house two sort of thing. They, the daughter wants this lamp. Wants to, they're they're kind of Yanni, a, Yanni wanted the lamp. Yeah, <laughs> the, they they're at the beginning of the movie. They're visiting the house before they move in there, um, and the daughter wants to take a souvenir of this lamp with the dog in the base. And she ends up obviously back in the house, so she keeps it, or she wants to keep it when they're moving in. I think was the story, and yeah. at one point it comes to life. Um, now, when the seal burst, and I think I said this about two as well, or maybe it was last week, it suddenly turned into Ghostbusters. Right. They like Ghostbusters. Um, and then as the house is on fire, and Kelly is, t- you know, having to drag Laurel out without her chair, Laurel is suddenly miraculously fucking cured. <laughs> uh, get that popcorn. <laughs> This is very simple. That is insult to injury. I, I tapped out. I yeah. bailed on Downton Abbey in the second season because they pulled that shit. You I do mean, not miraculously this cure a disabled character. Hmm? This at least had the supernatural explanation. Fair. <laughs> but still, no, you don't pull that shit. Um, it, is, it is damning disabled people. Fuck that. Yeah. And then 
it ends with a nod. What it had to have been a nod to Starman. Do you remember that, Jim? Ah. He just turns into this like circle of light. And, uh, uh, Roger. Oh, Roger's right. spirit in, in corporeal form at that point in the movie turns into this like dot of light and zooms away into space. Because I, I can't believe I made it that I was still awake at that point. It was like one thirty in the morning. Mm. Uh, you know, we skipped my favorite scene in the whole movie, actually. Okay. The the bug shootout. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I skipped over the bugs, but yeah. Um, they, right. Because they they finally get the Bugs Bunny from the first movie mm-hmm. with the two, you know, gangsters. Right. Where they they the house is fucking with them and they they see each other as bugs. One sh- one so it's, well, it's a bug and a snake because that's the, those are the masks they snake. wore to go terrorize the the daughter. So they see each other as an actual giant bug and an actual giant snake, and yeah, they start shooting at each other. And it takes a lot for them to kill each other. <laughs> I know that's what was funny about it because like they're you know half dead. And they're like, oh, man, it was you. Oh, it was you. And then they see each other again. Yeah. How many times did it go? Did it go only two or did no, it go it was three? Like, no, there were four or five, I think. It was a lot. Like, it was a few different rounds of them just Because, fi- yeah, they weren't just firing once at each other. They were firing, like, multiple yeah. rounds at mm-hmm. each other. And then they would see each other again and then just start open firing again. Right. Completely forgetting what they had just done. Mm-hmm. Best scene of the whole goddamn movie. But alas, you're talking about an hour and 35 minute movie. Yeah. Um, at the end of my notes, I just have SMH. Should it be FML? Um, <laughs> and, well, I'm going to skip the actual last thing in my notes. I'll, I'll, get, I'll do that when I get the brains. Um, no sequels during the weeks because... Thankfully, this is the last one. Yeah. Oof. They let it go further than they should have. Yeah. Way further. On the brains. On the brains. I almost, I almost wish I could remember the Billy Madison speech. Um, <laughs> this thing is down there with Showgirls, Mazes of Monsters, and Batman and Robin as one of the worst movies we've reviewed. Uh, after this review goes up, I normally listen to the episodes after they go live. Um, I think after this one goes live, I'm going to skip it and just do everything in my power to forget that I've seen it. It's a zero. You asked for this. Yeah, I know, I know. I wasted on my own petard. <laughs> who who knew it was going to be that bad? Um, uh, I'm I'm giving it a brain. I liked I liked Terry Trace. I think she man respectfully did whatever the fuck she could to try to make this into a watchable movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked Polly. I liked that one scene. But yeah, this is a void at all costs. Yeah, See that yeah. scene on YouTube, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Another terrible body double scene, by the way. Yeah. It was like a tradition there. They're mm-hmm. like, shower, um, and from... then we'll cover the face up with something obvious. And then... mm-hmm. Well, just from the last movie, because there were no, no scenes like that in the first two that I recall. No, no, there were not. No. So what have we learned? Uh, we hate ourselves. That's really <laughs> what it comes down to. We yeah. just absolutely hate ourselves. There is no other explanation, Bodo, as to yeah. why we did this to well, ourselves. I, I, I explained why I did it. I don't know why you agreed, but... Uh, I, you know, I argued against it, but you yeah. seemed like you really wanted to be a completist. Yeah, yeah. And um, do it. So I was like, all, all right, right, maybe maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised uh-huh. nope. somewhere along the way. And that's it for the house movies, thankfully. Until next time, <sighs> we'll be reviewing Miami Connection. Now, Miami Connection is another bad movie, but it is hilariously bad. I'm just going to read the description from Tubi. It's on Tubi. Um, a synth rock band uses their mastery of taekwondo to take on a gang of cocaine dealing motorcycle ninjas. I'm looking at this on IMDb for House Four. Uh-huh. There are four people with writing credits on this movie. C- committee makes sense. How did? But none of them bothered to write an actual script. No, no. Well, it's committee. It was all you... just. A... It keep was all the... just excuses to run the visual effects yeah, keep... together. Well, this is the issue with writing by committee, creating by committee. You stick with one writer, it might be decent. 
you pass it down to others and it gets doctored and changed and changed and it's this bullshit. Yeah. Anyway, but, until uh, then, yeah. <laughs> until then, of course, always remember, never forget wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. Thank you.